everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name's Jones and I am cooking up some delicious, mostly healthy, uh, usually family style vegan meals for you to try at home. Before we get into the video, I just want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers, new and old. Your support really means a lot to me and I just super appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please remember to subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. And remember to like this video and leave a comment. I always love to hear from you and let me know if there's any kind of recipes that you want to see me do on this channel. Today I have a comfort food recipe because who doesn't need some comforting in these crazy times that we're in right now? And I thought it was a good time to do my portobello french dip sandwich, which of course is totally vegan and for me is a really great comfort food and I've been wanting to do this recipe for a really long time and they happened to have all the ingredients I needed in the store when I went the other day so I thought it was a good time to do it and it really is a comfort food for me because when I was a kid French dip sandwiches were one of my favorite things and every time my family went to a restaurant where they had French dip sandwiches that's what I ordered so it brings back a lot of childhood memories for me and I hope it will for you too I've been a vegetarian for over 30 years and a vegan for the last about two and a half years. I was also vegan in my 20s. So it's been a really long time since I had an actual French dip sandwich. But a few years ago, blue. <laughs> but a few years ago, my boyfriend suggested that we try to make a vegetarian version of a French dip sandwich. Now I was still vegetarian at the time, not vegan, and I used a French onion soup from a brand called Pacific um, that was kind of hard to find. I really only found it in one store, but that's what we used. And when I went vegan, I realized that it wasn't vegan. It does have a little bit of milk in it. So back to the drawing board, I had to come up with my own recipe for the au jus part of the French dip, which is the juice that you dip it in. And it's usually made from a beef-based broth, but that's what I was using the French onion soup for. So I came up with a vegan version of a French onion soup, which is made from scratch. So it is a few extra steps uh, from, you know, before where I just bought a soup and could make it like that and it made it really really easy but I have to say that this recipe is way better than it ever was with that French onion soup so I was really happy with it and like I said it was a childhood favorite of mine so I consider it a comfort food and I hope you will feel the same and I really suggest you try this recipe because it is so good and really super comforting. So let's get into the recipe. So I'm going to start by cutting this very large onion um, into thin slices. So once I am done slicing the onions, I add about two tablespoons of vegan butter into a pan to melt. And I know this looks like a lot of butter, but I had a really large onion, so you might want to adjust it according to the size of your onion, or if you're just into less oil, you can add a little bit less. What we're doing here is caramelizing the onions. So you wanna stir them around and get them all covered in the vegan butter. And then you're going to partially cover it and stir them about every five minutes until they are soft and nice and golden brown. Next, we're going to slice our portabellas. I usually use about four to five extra large portobello mushrooms to make four sandwiches. So you can adjust it according to how many servings you want to make, but generally four to five is good. 
And then to wash them, don't rinse them under the water. You want to gently wipe them with a damp cloth. And then you want to scrape the insides out with a spoon. I don't always do this, but the insides are hard to wash. And since these days we want to be careful of germs, I think it's a good idea. And then I just compost those scraps. Then we're going to slice the portabellas into almost half inch thick slices. They do shrink a lot while they're cooking and we want a nice meaty texture so you don't want them to be too thin. In the meantime, our onions have caramelized really nicely and I'm just going to put those into a bowl and set them aside for now. So in the same pan, I'm going to add a little more vegan butter and then add the mushrooms. Now, this is a lot of mushrooms, so they're probably not going to fit all on the bottom of the pan, but that's okay. You can just pile them in there and then just partially cover it on low heat. Now we're going to make some veggie broth. I have two cups of water and one and a half veggie bouillon cubes, but you can use any kind of veggie bouillon you want or ready-made veggie broth. Or if you don't have veggie broth or bouillon, you can just add some extra salt to the recipe and two cups of water. I kind of did this wrong. I should have dissolved it in hot water, but my water got cold while I was filming. But that's okay. It will all dissolve as the mixture cooks. Okay, now that our mushrooms are cooking down and starting to caramelize really nicely, we are going to get the rest of the ingredients ready. So I start off with some garlic. I am going to mince this really finely. I am using a total of three garlic cloves, but you can use however much you want. I love garlic, so I use a lot of it. Okay, now that our portabellas are nice and caramelized, we're going to add some salt and some pepper and the minced garlic and just give that a stir. Then I add two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari, or you could use coconut aminos. One tablespoon of vegan Worcestershire sauce. A quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke. A quarter teaspoon of oregano and a quarter teaspoon of thyme. And then I add those two cups of veggie broth that I made. Then just give that a stir and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to add our caramelized onions and let it cook for another 10 minutes. You just want to cover that up and let it simmer for a while to let all those flavors meld. And if you feel like you need to add a little more water like I did here, feel free to do that. You can give it a taste and see if it needs a little more of any of the ingredients that we added for flavor. So for the bread part of the sandwich, I love to use ciabatta rolls. And I happen to find these in the bakery section at Safeway. I know it can be really hard to find bread these days, but you can usually find it in the bakery section. And you just want to make sure that you get something that has a nice sturdy crust so that it'll hold up to the dip. And I like to toast mine first, and then I add some mustard. This is totally optional, but I love the flavor that the mustard gives, especially if you're going to use Swiss flavored cheese as your cheese. I've always loved Swiss and mustard. And then I added a little bit of nutritional yeast on there because I always do. <laughs> and then you want to pull your portobellas out of the juice with a slotted spoon or a slotted spatula in order to drain it. And then I used some Daya Swiss flavored slices, which I am really loving lately. And then I put those in the toaster for about five minutes to melt the cheese. And in the meantime, I scooped some of that juice into a bowl. 
and then there is the sandwich with the nice melted Swiss cheese. If you don't have Swiss, you can use whatever kind you like. It's up to you, but that's my favorite. And here is that hearty and comforting and super delicious French dip sandwich. I usually cut mine in half to make it easier to dip into the bowl. And then enjoy. I can't even begin to tell you how delicious and how comforting these sandwiches are. And although it does take a little bit of time to cook, it is a really easy recipe and I'm pretty sure that you can find all of these ingredients in your local stores right now. If you need to replace something like liquid smoke because you don't have it or you can't find it, I have some suggestions in my blog post at vegerarchy.com. Please check that out and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment and I would love to hear from you. Please tell me what your favorite comfort food is in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.